Hey there, this is Trader Tim from eminimind.com and I'm doing a trade recap video for May 2nd, 2019. Uh, and I'm here to help you improve your trading and become financially free so you can live the lifestyle that you want. Today is the day after FOMC meeting announcement, Thursday. And typically, the Thursday after is a really good day of trading. Things kind of settle down after the announcement on Wednesday, usually Tuesday's a little quiet, and then Wednesday morning, and then the afternoon announcement comes out, and then Thursday's a pretty technical good day of trading. Uh, today was not really so much the case. You can see on the daily chart, uh, at the close today, I drew up this low to high from the gap up back here that just happened to be where we stopped at 2906. Uh, we did come down to 2901 so you know expecting that 2900 to be a big round number of support and that may be the case so so that's why I drew up the retracement here at uh, from 2856 anchor point in addition to the one that I have down here from the actual major swing low uh, in terms of trades for today you know the market opened and right away in the first 15 minutes we were kind of in this whipsaw mode where we came uh, put a low in broke highs then broke lows then broke highs again if I were to just start drawing retracement setups you'd see it's just failure 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 well, this one didn't even touch its 50% uh, and so that's why not trading in the first 15 minutes is helpful because it gives you some reference points. You can use the information that you glean right off the open going forward. It can be a big benefit into giving you a clue of, you know, are we likely to be in a trend day or a range bound day? And so shortly thereafter, we started going into a decent series of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, now I'm just talking like the next 10 minutes of trade. And so I drew up the low to high here and I just left it up. We came, we didn't touch it exactly, uh, but we came down close to it. And then when we rallied here and we broke the high, we came close to the negative 23, but then you can see we pulled back and then it uh, took an, you know, a pullback and then a rally to get all the way there. So you end up with you know, a retracement that is sort of inside of the bigger retracement. So I just left this big one up there and acknowledged that, okay, you know, structurally, we are making higher highs and higher lows. So that's a good sign. And then once the thir first 30 minutes passed us by, I put a mark, the horizontal lines here, at the top and the bottom of the first 30-minute range. And the thing, one thing I noticed, too, early in the day, we didn't have high and low ticks uh, corresponding very well. So, like, these highs up here uh, did not correspond with the high tick of the day. They were off by a couple minutes. And I get pretty picky with, you know, I want the high tick to line up with high price if I'm going to take a, a short, a counter trend trade, and, and vice versa for longs. So seeing that and having uh, the market at this point, we had traded down, what was the low at that point? It was a 19 and a quarter. And so we were still above this little swing low back here. And the trend was pretty substantially up, at least in the first 30 minutes, even though it was kind of sloppy. Structurally, the higher highs and higher lows were taking us up. So when I saw us break out above the first 30-minute range, I just drew the next long setup such that the 50% basically lined up with the top of the first 30-minute range. So it's like we... Um, uh, jump through a hole in the ceiling and then landed, you know, a foot to the right of the hole. And so we punched through the support or the resistance rather. And then we've come pulled back and landed on support. This uh, little cluster back here, the top of the first 30 minute range, then acting as support. So uh, 29, 29 and a quarter 
is where I place my entry, just rounding up and adding a tick. And I do that because if price were to come down and touch the 50 exactly, basically like it did here, and if I had my order at the 50 exactly, I probably wouldn't get a fill because in the real environment, the market needs to trade through your price about 99% of the time to get a fill. Uh, and then I rode this, you know, it, it went up and got a first target of two points. And then I split my stop on the remainder. I drew up the next retracement and I put my stop below the 618 on, on that portion. And then I put it below, I was trailing these two little dips here. So the second portion got taken out at 31 and a quarter uh, as well. And then the, the last portion got ticked out here. Uh, actually to the tick at 30s and we didn't end up going really any higher we, we double topped up here and so at that point I'm saying okay well the trend is uh, I'm watching for a trend change because we got a double top we did not get a high ticket highs on either of these so not quite as strong of a case for shorts uh, at least right at that point but uh, well, I really wanted to see us come break through the top of the first 30 minute range, you know, a substantial break. And without having a high ticket highs, I felt like, you know, this little dip in was not a very strong, deep dip. What I'd like to see is a dip that breaks into the first 30 minute range such that the opposite of, of that long setup that I just drew up where the short lines up with the top of the 30 minute range. And so we ended up just barely dipping in and then rallying. So when I drew up the, the short, I didn't take the short because I felt like this was going to be support on top of the first 30 minute range, which it was briefly. And I actually took another long when we broke the short here and I drew up the long like this coming off of the first 30 minute range because remember up until that point we were you know pretty solid uptrend for the morning and uh, all of these pullbacks that we have had you know have two days is really the max pullback three in this case here but most of them have just been one day uh, so I was you know assessing just the recent patterns uh, thinking maybe we get uh, some continuation so I ended up taking the long uh, over here at 30s and it got a little bit of a bounce and then it came down and, and stopped me out so no big deal but um, I wasn't really able to get into a short after that I drew up from highs down to the swing low here and that still put the 50% a little bit above the top of the first 30 minute range. Whenever we have a failure of two setups back to back, so like the short failed right here, and then the long failed right after that, I always uh, kind of pull back and am a little bit more patient to jump into another trade. And when we break into the first 30 minute range, after we've been trading above it, Usually we make a pretty quick move to the bottom of the range. And this time uh, we started, you know, we, we got two thirds, three quarters of the way there and then got a little bit more substantial bounce. I drew up that retracement. That one did not even come all the way halfway back. And then there wasn't really a setup uh, at that midpoint either. So kind of a, uh, one of those drifter days where uh, really, the only setup in here uh, were these two. You had the retracement there, and then the next one here, which uh, the reason I didn't feel comfortable taking those two was just for the fact that we had broken in to the first 30-minute range, and we were kind of right in the middle of it, and it hadn't been a very clean day already. So, you know, having the the winner uh, the, on the first long and then the second long um, stopping me out it just the market wasn't as clean as, uh, as I would have liked to see it so 
then when we came down and break lows, uh, that was pretty much pretty much my morning. I, there wasn't really a kind of went straight down pretty quick here. Uh, we did take out this swing low, but note it's not the technically it's not the the real major swing low because the low here is still above the big body candle, and so this is the the major swing low at an 89 uh, at 28.95. So you know, as of right now, the uptrend is totally still intact. Uh, I don't, you know, feel bad about today. Um, it was definitely a tougher day to discern. You know, even in here, if you come in, you draw the full halfway back long, you know, the market just kind of came close to it, got a little bit of a bounce, and then just traded through it. And if it weren't for us being right in the middle of the first 30 minute range then taking this short that has a high above the halfway back 50 percent and a low below the 61.8 you know that can be a good trade but sometimes or a lot of times what happens is if we break above the first 30 minute range and then all of a sudden kind of fall back into it like we can't get legs to the upside, uh, we can just kind of dwell in the middle without really moving anywhere substantially. Like you might move two or three points in one direction, two or three points in another direction, but it doesn't really end up providing enough movement to, to give you any good setup. So that's why I like to be active at the top of the range and the bottom of the range, uh, but in this case, once we broke in, uh, I just didn't really see a, a great setup. So tomorrow's Friday, and uh, then we head into the weekend. Now that we're beyond the FOMC meeting announcement, um, we should be able to, and, and most of the earnings, uh, have, or at least a good chunk of the, the bigger earnings have come out. Uh, it'd be nice to see a little bit more movement, at least outside of this channel that we've been in up here. Very, very tight channel. So being on the underside of the channel, maybe we can get a move tomorrow to like a 29.2850, which would be the 50% short. And then that'll give us a little more indication, okay, if we punch through it, and break the 61.8 at 35s, then it's, you know, the market's just off and running, and then we should see new highs again pretty easily. If we get more resistance at 29.50s, or if we move lower tomorrow, then, you know, coming down to this 28.72.75 should be a pretty easy get, and, uh, you know, a little bit deeper pullback would be nice, maybe build a little of a base down here, double bottom sort of thing on the daily chart and then uh, take off again higher. If the market just completely falls apart and we take out this 28.53, then we have bigger things to, or at least, you know, a bigger pullback would be likely. And then I would consider this a double top on, on like a weekly chart if I were to switch to that then you'd have a double top on the weekly chart. But you can see, you know, there, there is the potential here for in, uh, inverted head and shoulders, where we have the left shoulder, a head. And so even if we pull back, you know, 2,600, it doesn't mean that, you know, we're going into a recession. There, there could be uh, a big or a slight, a lot of times the right shoulder isn't quite as deep. So it looks more like uh, an upward slant like that so maybe we pull back to 2700 and then round out and move higher but uh, either way always be looking for good opportunities and the opportunities come in the form of you know assessing the risk a certain trade might look good but if it's if it has really high risk, then it's probably not going to be the best opportunity. So uh, I hope everyone has a good rest of your week, and I will talk to you next week.